Uh, okay, let's examine the setup. That is weird to do Infernal off test now. It's going to be very slow and boring, but that's okay. With Inferno, most important stats are Prayer Bonus and Range Defense. Uh, where is it? Right here. Those are the two most important stats. So goal with whatever setup you end up with is maximize this, maximize this, and go from there. Uh, Devout Boots are fine. Guardian Boots are fine. Pegasians are fine. Those are all like preference. Armor versus Crystal is fine. Crystal Shield, Ellie's a direct upgrade, but if you don't have Ellie, Crystal Shield's like barely worse. Crystal Shield's totally fine. Uh, Kodai saves an inventory spot if you have it. You don't have to bring waters. And then Occult's good for a higher chance of one-shotting nibblers. That's about it. Bring Van Braces if you have them. If you don't have them, Barrow's Gloves are fine. If you have Van Braces, I recommend people bring one Divine, one regular Ranging Pot. Because if you're at the max boost, your Tebow hits a little higher. It can hit up to 86. Not 86, 75 instead of 73. Um, if you're just bringing Barrow's Gloves, that doesn't matter as much. You can just bring one or two range pots. up to you. Uh, any other gear discussion? Oh, you can wear Max Cape if you have Barrow's Gloves. Otherwise, wear Assembler because you need that to get the max hits. Simple, basic stuff. Max Cape or uh, Range Cape. Whichever you got. What is the female armor cape? Disgusting. That's what it is. <laughs> Ao, thank you for the follow. Uh, I think we're good. All right, we can pull out the pre-pots. Uh, suffering versus Ring of the Gods is the only. Other oh, thing oh yes. Of. Um, I find Ring of the Gods far, far better. It gives you the Holy Wrench effect, which is basically three doses of restore alone. Plus, it's got eight prayer bonus instead of four. If you're getting through with plenty of prayer and you're running out of bruise, then maybe bring suffering. Sure. It's it's preference, but like Ring of the Gods is really good. I think that should be your default. Long time server on YouTube. Hey, thank you, thank you for coming out. All right, we're gonna try really hard not to die to triples. That's what we're gonna do. Oh my god, I forgot to pre-pot imbued heart. Oh my god, it's actually over. There we go. It does not matter at all. Titties with the prime. My dude, thank you so much, my man. Appreciate it, my guy. Um, oh, I like to keep my auto cast on Blood Barrage because most of the time you're like, when you're barraging for health, you're like AFKing on it. I think usually you'd want to keep this on auto cast. You're manually casting Ice Barrage for the most part. Uh, normally you'd bring eight brews. I'm going to speed through this with less, just like rigor everything. I don't need them. Don't forget to drop a potion over here. And we go. So early on, big priority is always to kill nibblers as fast as possible. Nothing can kill you early, so you might as well like... Try and take them out so you have more pillar health. I see a 30 XP drop. I know those aren't dead. I need another cast. Important tiles are this one. This is the bat safe spot. And I like to start from right side of pillar. It doesn't really matter where. Let's give this a big cast. Oh, let me kill a heart rate thing. That's kind of pointless. There we go. So just like a try to avoid letting nibblers munch on your pillar as much as possible. The name of the game in Inferno is keeping your supplies up. And pillar health is a supply. Okay, blobs are six tick. They read you on the third tick, and then three ticks later, they use the opposite attack. So... Also, if they read you on the first tick, they immediately attack after three more ticks. They read you, like, tick three of their attack cycle, basically. So you'll see he's going to immediately attack. Yep. And I'm just, like, chilling in the middle. It doesn't really matter about, like, safe spotting everything. Later, I'll be pulling stuff to pillars. Wow, I'm getting shredded. I'm going to give this a blood barrage next because I need some health. And golden. 
Got some watermelon. Life is good. We take that. We take that. All right, immediately go down here. This is speedrunning trick. If you come up here and then come back down, it gives you this nice little spread. I'm going to cast at that Nibbler. I don't want him to touch a pillar. He should be dead. I believe I hit him for one damage. Yep. You're dead. Yeah, Armor Helm is more J DPS. Normally, you'd run Justy Helmet. That's really, really common. I ran it uh, myself. Okay, making sure that blob doesn't hit me. We're good. Okay, priorities here. Kill this blob first. It doesn't matter on this wave, but it will matter in a bit. I want to kill this blob against the uh, east side of Pillar because this one up here will give me a nice little phantom brush. Also, that blob just hit me 18. That's sacrilege. Oh my god, I did 29 double max. Okay, well, great opportunity to show phantoms. So the most common one is you just come down here with a blob and you just give it a nice little blood barrage and then you manually cast it again. And just queues it up. So you'll actually cast at the corpse of the monster, which is great. So you can see I got a bunch of health back. Not as much as I could have. It's kind of unlucky, but... Okay, if everything's frozen, I'm going to actually blood barrage this, get full health. Cool. All right, we got first melee coming up. I don't have to pray anything at the start of these waves. That's all dead. Give him a Tebow because I'm bored. Give him another Tebow because I'm bored. Oh, I should show uh, melee safe spots. I'll do that next wave. Okay, I'm going to cast it this one since I missed it. I'm going to also cast it this nibbler. No reason not to. All right, let's kill this uh, bat. Normally, you just kill the the melee in that case. I'm actually, gonna go get the snibbler. Okay, melees. They dig roughly every fifty ticks. Oh my god, I'm getting smashed by everything off prey. They dig roughly every fifty ticks. If you tank a melee, if you take a melee, it makes it so they can't dig for the next fifteen ticks. I think. So if they were going to dig, they will now wait till the next dig cycle. Okay. The southwest tile of a monster is really important. It's good to turn this on. You can do that in NPC indicators. This is the brain of the monster, basically. So because this tile sees me, it is trying to go in a straight line at me. That is why this melee cannot attack me, because he can't reach me. Now he can, because I've stepped out. Other weird thing is a corner trap. This is called a corner trap. So... The brain of the monster really, really likes going east or west first. That's his goal, is always go east or west towards me. That's his default primary action. So in this case, it's desperately trying to go east through the pillar to hit me, but it can't, so it just sits there. That's all a corner trap is. So you can actually do this from a bunch of the sides of the pillar. I'm going to do it from south side over here. And you can see this is a safe spot here as well. This is a corner trap. You can also safe spot from here because the brain of the monster is trying to get to me, but it can't. And I can actually corner trap through here as well. Because it's trying to go into the pillar, but it can't. And then you can save spot from right here. So it's really good to know these safe spots, have them ingrained in your brain and be able to pull them off quickly because they can save you in later ways. Do you think Aram's Master Wand Bofa is good enough gear for Inferno? Yeah, that's plenty. As long as you got Bofa, I'd say you're probably set. It's going to be harder than without, but it's definitely doable. Okay, I see a 30 XP drop. I know that's not dead. Might as well cast again. Now it's dead. I saw 10 more HP. Let's kill this bat. And go to the bat. Safe spot. And kill this. Other big rule. Important thing to understand. Is health is extremely important to get back every single wave. Usually you're trying to get 99 every single wave. I'm not worrying about it too much with this run, but there's no reason not to get 99 HP before you start the next wave. It gives you the highest chance of survival. Nice little dig you can do if you're standing on the bat save spot. When he digs, you can corner save spot. Just like that. Nice little spot that comes in important later. 
How do you get the corner tile? It's in NPC indicators plugin. It's show southwest tile, I believe. Turn this up a bit. All right. Okay, I've got the blob over there. One of those is dead. Let's just run at this. I'll tank a blob hit. It's fine. Cool. Didn't even damage me. Uh, let's just kill the melee. Usually, the order I'm killing things at the end of the wave is based on what has the potential to hurt me. But I don't like healing on... I do not like healing on melees because it just sucks, if I can avoid it. They have a really high mage level. Nice little 60 XP drop. I know those are all dead. Best targets for heals are bats, blobs, not blobs, bloblets. Blobs suck to heal on. They have a high mage level as well. And rangers later. Rangers have a really low, uh, really low mage level as well. So you won't splash on them that often. Just a flick there. Took no damage. Hee <laughs> hee! Yeah, don't make sudden movements. It's not worth it. Don't pull any of that. There's no reason. I'm taking it slow and steady. Just trying to get a cape. 6 HP drop. Okay. How do you count ticks? I don't count ticks, but I, I feel it out for sure. Okay, I see this. I'm just going to go over here. I don't feel like dealing with that right now. I'm just going to kill these bats. And because I know how the southwest tile works, I know that if I go around on this side, I'll even show it because I see people mess this up a lot. If I go around on this side... Whoa, he's swinging around! Oh, God! But I know because of the southwest tile, I should have gone to the south side of Pillar. And I could have avoided that. We'll just kill the melee. In fact, I don't want to flick him anymore. Let's come down here. And use a corner trap, why not? Really good idea, mess around with melees early. If you know how the melees work, then later on you won't be afraid to do the kind of thing I'm doing. Pillar rotation, all kinds of ways to safe spot them. Just abuse their uh, their mechanics and you can always get them out of the equation. I should have shown the... Um... We'll get back to that. I'll show the phantom from that side. Ah, little double blob. Okay, I know they read me instantly, so immediately switch. No reason not to kill this, but I know that this melee is going to swing around this pillar if I stand here. So I'm going to move right now. Good idea usually is kill the thing that you can't uh, cast at. So kill this mage. I am just getting like max hit by everything right now. This is absurd. Let's let him down. I can corner trap. He's digging. That's uh, fine by me. I can actually barrage both of these at once, so why not? Cool. And we're low health. Barrage the melee a bit. Do blobs read your protection over two ticks and attack the opposite? So if they see you instantly, they start the cycle on the... They're already on the third tick of their cycle. So they read you, and then three ticks later they attack. After that, it's every six ticks. So they go three ticks, read, three ticks, attack, three ticks, read, three ticks, attack. Back and forth, back and forth. This is double melee. There's nothing to be afraid about. Look at these nibblers. I'm just going to get full health. Why not? Nah, we can heal in the ranger. There's no reason to. Uh, a lot of people will mark a tile and they'll be like, this is the corner trap tile. But it's not. there's no corner trap tile. Like, it's this whole row you can use. So, like, don't be afraid to, like, use any of these tiles you need. They're all useful. And I know that safe spot. I'm just go here. Easy. The monkey's heart rate is 100 BPM. That's how he counts ticks. It's true. Can you practice triple jab before going into Inferno? You can practice two jads, which I would recommend. It's almost the exact same just to get a feel for it. Triple jads isn't the hard part of Inferno at all, even though I died on, two on it last time I tried to stream this. <laughs> Unlucky. Okay, this is first ranger wave. 
Okay, I see 26. That should be these two dead. I'm just going to pipe this. And I'm just going to come down here and chill. If it's one nibbler left, don't waste your time like barraging it over and over. Just pipe it. It's fine. It's way, way faster and it's going to touch your pillar less. Less chance of waste. All right, let's show how to lazy flick. Okay. For all the attacks in Inferno, it's as soon as the animation starts that the attack is calculated. So you can see the timer to my on is right as he stands up right before he starts to hunker down. So as soon as he hunkers down, the attack is calculated. So I'd recommend practicing this a bit as well. You're going to lazy flick a ton and all the monsters are similar to this. It's just as soon as the animation starts, you switch the prayer on. You don't have to be perfect with this either. If it's on for two ticks, that's okay. You're still saving prayer. Ideally, you get it down to one tick, but some flicking is better than none. You have to flick to get through Inferno. You have to. So learning that's really, really important. When someone takes a hit on triples, they're probably going to take multiple. It's true. I'm going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> and it's not going to happen again. Are waves the hardest part? Yeah, I would say so. I would say waves are by far the hardest part. Little thing there, I was keeping range prey on. The ranger can still see you from there if you're on this corner of the pillar as he's walking up. He has a line of sight, so you got to be careful. Don't assume he, things can't see you just because you're like in this area. That's not how it works. Let's pop a, uh, a divine. Ew, we're not wearing pants. Awful. Oh, pet peeve of mine. People say to take the shield off at the early waves. Don't do that. It's a waste of time. Oh, look at that barrage. Oh, gorgeous. Don't take shield off at the start because it's only like a 0.4% less splash chance. It brings it from like a 95% chance of not splashing to 94%. That's not worth it. Then you build up the habit of not putting the crystal shield on at all and it's bad for your later waves. It's just not worth it. Just keep it on at all times. If you have your mage gear on, you should have the crystal shield on. I felt enraged duck was the hardest. Healers is very hard, but I'd say 63 in general, unless you get lucky, is probably the hardest part of the entire caves. Oops. Okay, I saw 34 XP drop. Check and make sure this guy didn't read me. Let's pull up, kill this. You can see I stepped out and he insta-read me. We're actually going to go back. He read me again. Go here. Pray mage for a tick. All right, we're good. And again, I always want to leave blobs in this position for last. They're a giant med kit. They're worth about 40 health. Oh, so you might as well take it. A phantom from this position is always delicious. If you have full health, you can phantom with ice barrage. It's fine. Get your cast on all of them. Okay, I see this. So they both read me the same tick. I can just pray mage, take that hit, and then uh, move over here. Takes no damage. Nice little 40 XP drop as well. That is beautiful. You can also phantom blobs on this side of pillar. So it's either here you can phantom, or here you can phantom. So you gotta bring it up here. Are you posting this on YouTube? Yeah, that's the goal. Assuming I don't die or do something stupid. Which I would never do. You can fan some from right here. So I'll do it the same just with Ice Brush. 60 HP drop. You'll see I'll get one more cast. Free, free, free. Copium! Hey, shut up! Okay. I'm going here temporarily. I'm going to go get that Nibbler as soon as this is dead. So let's queue up the cast. Click it. There we go. Okay, I want to keep that blob for less, so let's do that.
it's really common to take an off prey like rain shit while you're learning flicking and that kind of thing so just assume like you're gonna take a hit from something and kill things in the proper order regardless you never know if you're gonna miss a hit take a 46 now you're starting the next wave with like 50 less health than you should that's not ideal these 6 xp drops are gorgeous new pb incoming probably this might be the fastest i've ever gone Okay, I took one blob hit. Okay, let's get that. Blob read me. Blob read me. I missed it. It's okay. Go back, get it. So I just flicked those two blobs. Actually, I missed this one. All right. I like to take out blobs in this position, just because there's no way to phantom on them, so it's ideal to take them out of the picture. All right, hold up. Before I do anything, let's explain how to do a pillar stack. Ow! Anytime you're met with this, a big nasty and a blob. Big nasty blob. What do I do? I'm scared. You just pray ranged, click the ranger, start alternating as soon as you see him hunker down. And the timing for a one tick... I would practice this on, like, the first blob, by the way. It's ideal to practice this. The way I do this is you're basically trying to keep them both lit up. As soon as it unlights, you're good on the timing to click the next prayer. And that's how you keep in cycle. I wouldn't go off any, like, attack cooldowns or anything like that. Just go off the light. So just stare at your prayers and click them. <laughs> and you'll never mess up. It's impossible. I should be dropping a blood barrage. I'm not at full health. Okay. Nope, we don't flinch. Flinching is a very bad habit. I never recommend anybody flinch. I'll show it on the next one, and I'll tell you why. Next time we have that set up. Flinching is coping. Learn how to one tick. There's going to be a wave where it makes sense why. Alternating is not just a pillar solve. It is an everything solve. 95% of the time, it can get you out of a sticky situation. Oh, anytime you have a, a melee dig against the, the sides of the pillar, you know you can pull them down to the corner trap. Just by default. How do you maintain your one-tick flicks? It's literally just look for it to unlight. That's all you do. So as soon as the prayer turns off, click it. That's how you keep cycle. All right, there's nothing scary in this wave. Let's get the nibblers. Both are dead. Cool. Go back. Let's get this. All right, and if I move this over, these won't stack on top of each other. Nice. So I can heal on this if I need to. I don't in this case. Why don't we do this? I'll heal a little bit. Rangers are great targets for healing. They have very, very low mage level. And it's really easy to get health back. JW, thank you for the follow. You're two-tick clicking? I haven't learned one tick yet. For most people, I don't recommend two-ticking on a first cape. I find it a lot harder. And I see most people doing it, they'll get their blob off-tick on their two-tick, and then they're just taking every blob hit anyway. One tick is a lot easier. Even though it's harder timing-wise, it's not, though. Because as long as you just follow the rule, alternate, when it turns off, you stay in cycle. Keeps it easy. Okay, react fast, and go up here, and we're safe. You see a nasty thing next to you, just move up the pillar. Infamous, thank you for the fall. Is he going for his first cape? He is. He is going for his first cape. It's been my lifelong goal to get an Inferno Cape. One tick is rough when you need to move or attack. I would say if you need to move or attack, you should not be flicking. You should get to a position where you don't need to move and then start alternating. Unless you're doing a speed run, you shouldn't have to be moving while flicking. Typically, not worth it. Okay, one of those that hit a zero on. So I'm going to wait for that to come up a bit. Give this another cast. Still not dead. I know the XP drop. That was really low. 
Now it's dead. And back to blub. Cool, those two are dead. Pray melee. I know this guy's gonna dig in a second, so let's just wait. Let's wait till he digs, because it's gonna make a nice, easy safe spot for me. And let's kill the melee first. That should be the priority. He can dig, and I can't heal off him. No reason not to pull him out of the equation. I'm full health, but you get the idea. There's priorities. Don't you have to two-tick for Zuck sets? Most people, I would say, should not be flicking sets on a first game. You typically just tank and you attack the things. How do you learn to one-tick? Any You take any four-tick attacking monster, which is almost everything in the game. Hold up, this is a great example of one-ticking. Okay, kill the thing that's in the way. I'm gonna tank the blobs for a second. Let's watch that ranger start alternating. This is why I don't tell people to flinch. Because if you learn to flinch and you never learn to one-tick, this solve is not possible. And this solve comes up a lot. Just collect the ranger. Easy. See, I'm just looking for that prayer to unlight. That's all I'm looking for. Unlight, click. Unlight, click. Unlight, click. Unlight, click. Unlight, click. As soon as this ranger's dead, I'm gonna go back behind pillar. I'm gonna wait for the blob attack. Go behind the pillar. He should have read me with range. Pray mage. Cool. We're good. There is a ton of times where you want to flick out here because you have a big nasty thing and a blob. There could be a blob anywhere. There can be a blob over here. There can be a blob over here. There can be a blob over here. And there's something you want to get that's right here. Well, you can't go get it if you can't one tick alternate. You literally just cannot. It's really, really useful. It solves like everything. So the faster you're not afraid to do it, the easier that is to pull off. All right, Castorino. I don't need health. Just give it the two ice barrage combo. Might still not be dead. Let's just make sure. Cool. All right, 40 XP drop. Let's go down here. Blob just read me. Let's kill this blob and then kill the bat. Let's kill the blob and then kill the bat. Let's kill the blob and then kill the bat. Give it a quick little blood barrage. Let's kill this. I'm going to drop it a spec. I want it out of the equation since things aren't dying. I think everything's dead. Nope. Oh god, what do I do? A melee! We go up here. Sometimes when I click prayer for flicking, it bugs out like showing it's off instead of it's on. That is packet loss. That's textbook. Yeah. Textbook packet loss. Can you explain one tick flicking? I like to turn on the, the prayer helper and the prayer plugin, but it's basically a Gears of War reload. You're just clicking twice before the line hits the right side. So it's like you're clicking twice per tick. That's all that one tick flicking is. So it's like double click, 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 double click. You don't need to one tick flick for a first cape, but if you can do it, it's helpful. It'll speed it up. I'm healing up just a little bit. I should have left the ranger alive, but I was uh, staring at chat as I do. Just get a little bit of health. Going for sub 70 at the moment. And this is very, very chill. Taking our time with this. I just want to make sure I show everything. Okay. All right, two blobs. So we're going to come here. I'm just going to flick these for a second. The reason I'm not going down here is because that ranger could see me. I'm going to go down here. Cast. Both of them are dead. Let's just go over here and kill the melee. What's really awesome about this is I get to double phantom barrage. So I could go down to 10 health and I can get full health off just these two blobs. Which is great. Make sure you pray range. He's going to come around the corner. Cool. Kill him. Turn your prayers on before double clicking or else you're just rapidly turning your prayers off. Yeah, you can you can one tick click your prayers keeping them off permanently as well. So you don't want to do that. Usually. <laughs> 
That was an easy solve. So the big thing is just separating the big nasties from each other. That was a kind of bad wave. I can't actually phantom from that distance. That was kind of dumb. Yeah, let's go back behind pillar and get this guy in the proper position. I don't need to phantom, but let's get him in the right spot. Okay. Double ice brush. Bang. None of them are dead. One of them is dead. None of them are dead. One of them is dead. They're all dead. <laughs> you can kind of guess what's happening based on the uh, the XP drop. It can it can give you a lot of information. Sometimes it makes no sense what's happening. OTKD, key... thank you for the follow. What did you say? One of the key things I look for when barraging flops, if I hit a 40, it usually means I've killed the ranger and the melee, and I should switch to mage. Yep, yep. That a 40 happens, XP drop like, means two of them are dead, and the mage has the highest mage defense, so it's probably the mage left. Usually. I'm just kind of chilling here. They're going to dig in a second. Now let's start pulling them up. I can move to the safe spot as soon as this guy digs. I'm going to wait here a second just to let the ranger pull up a bit. Cool. Now we move. There's a really long delay on the melee, his attack after he digs. I believe it's eight ticks after he comes up before he can attack you. It's a really long time. You usually have a bit of a gap. You think running to South Pillar is bad for learners? It can get you a cape, and if that's all you care about, I'm, I'm not going to BM you for doing it. But you will consistently get through it if you learn not to run to South Pillar. Not to run to South Pillar, and not to panic. I see 40 XP drop. That 40 XP drop is crucial. That tells me they're all dead. So anytime you see that, it's like, ah, nibblers are gone. Life is good. <laughs> I started learning Inferno a couple days ago. My PV is wave 46. Things get spicy towards the end. They do. These are the free waves. So that's why it's really important to maintain your resources to make it so the last waves are as easy as they can be. It's good to keep your pillar health up at the beginning, keep your resources high, not waste prayer, not waste anything. Uh, this is six nibblers, so let's just go up here. Man, I'd be mad if I got that in a speedrun. Really, the, the landmark waves that are dangerous before mage range is 31 and 48, which are ranger melee double blob and major melee double blob. Respectively. Yep. Double blob's bad. Scary, mm. bad, big damage. This is a, a, a really important concept. This little move I did. It's so simple, but people really struggle with this. When a thing is over here, you just pull it in. That's all you do. You're like, ah, I can't get to that mage. What do I do? Okay. And it takes them like 10 seconds to process. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Uh, just pull it up. Just pull it up to the pillar, man. Beep, beep, beep. Pulls up to the pillar. Perfect. Now I can hit it. <laughs> Pull the truck up to the pillar. Most of the time you see nasty stuff over here, let's go here. That's almost always going to be the solve. Almost always. Wave 15, a nightmare for speedrunners. Indeed. Lower Delg, thank you for the follow. And Desizens, thank you, my dude. Oh, I'll show Lazy Flicking on the next one. That's my bad. Lazy Flicking with Mages is the exact same as with Ranger. Uh, let's let these pull up. Okay, I can see one of these is alive. Let's go out here. Get them. I don't want this bat to come down the right side of Pillar, so move to the left. And he gets stuck. Okay, this is how you do a flick. You're looking at the flicker under him. The flicker is the same as the ranger hunkering down. That's your cue that he has attacked you. So you're turning the prayer on just before he flickers. And that's all it takes. Being able to do this is really important. This saves a ton of prayer. You spend so much time shooting mages just by themselves. If you just can't protect from magic, you're going to waste restore after restore. And it's a really easy flick to do. It's really, really simple. They have a really obvious visual cue. Is this Pink Clay? I'm Pink Clay's alter ego. 
monkey moment. Oh, I should get my restore when I get a second. Okay, I see mages here. Let's just get the nibblers. This tile's a godsend. Anytime nibblers are on South Pill, you just go there. And I can just shoot from here. I'm mostly lazy flick. You can easily get a cape just with lazy flicking. I didn't know how to one tick flick when I got my first cape. Not a big deal. One tick flicking just speeds it up, lets you pre rigor at the same time, which is nice. Alright, kill these. I know that's dead. Give him a quick Tebow shot. Always works, never works. Okay. AFK. Cool. Alright, first wave with a mage and a blob. Okay. Okay, I see two of these are dead. Let's just go out and get the other one. I'll tank one one blob hit. It's fine. I have the health for it. Will it hit me? It will not. This is why I say you don't need to two-tick, because what people do is they run out to go get the nibblers, and they're like trying to, they're like, oh, two-tick, and they're losing ticks, and they're like trying to kick, click the nibbler, and then they take a mage hit. And a mage hit is equal to like 10 blob hits. It's just not, just take one blob hit, it's fine. You have really high range defense, it almost never hits, just, just take one, you've got the health for it. You can heal off it in a second. It's in the phantom position already. I could get 40 more health from it. If I can't safely go get nibblers tank in one blob hit, I'm not going to go get the nibblers. The sweating guy meme intensifies. I get full health so I don't have to think. I can just tank one blob hit. It's fine. <laughs> you don't have to perfectly avoid all damage. It's not a big deal. The nice thing is the range hit on the blob hits about half as hard as the mage hit. And you're praying mage anyway. So you have a really, really low chance of it doing any substantial damage. It's almost always a zero. Can you explain Phantom? I can! So if you're far enough away, your barrage has an invisible travel time. And while it's in the air, you basically can cast at a corpse. And it gives you the full heal off them. I see 20 XP drop there, dead. So basically, when you have Bloblets, you're healing off three corpses when you do a Phantom. Uh, I saw that Blob read me. Yep. Okay, one of those has one health. What am I going to do? 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 Guys, help. What am I going to do? I'm going to pray Mage, and I'm going to click it. Cool. It's not dead. Go back out. Now it's dead. Sweet. If I had to run out to Narnia, that's fine. I have 99 health. I'll, I'll risk 99 health. It's okay. I'll just pray mage, run up to it, get it, run back. Not a big deal. Always, always, if you can, kill the mage first. Always. Because the mage can respawn things, if you're at full health, it's it causes problems. What happens if a mage respawns this blob right now? Let's say this blob's dead. What happens? It respawns behind it. Now I have to alternate, and I'm wasting prayer. So you're like, oh, I don't have to kill the mage first. This isn't a speed run, but kill it first if you can. If it's an option, always go for it first. It's the most dangerous piece. It's the queen of the chessboard. So just pull it out of the equation. I can heal off this blob last. There's a ton of reasons to leave him for last. Can't wait till the range mage range stacks. They'll be coming. No worries. Do you pulling out the chess references when he barely understands checkers? I've been playing 40 chess since you were born. Unlucky. Just 10 more waves. Always pray mage um, after this pulls out. The mage blob is the, by far the most accurate, and he can put you to minus 20 health before the next wave starts. Just make sure you don't tank him. Ah, nice. This is a free wave. Okay. Let's just kill these bats and then get the mage. I don't want to flick a blob. I don't feel like it. Flicking blob sucks. Just tank a couple bats hits. Great time to use specs is on bats. They hit me really hard. That's annoying. But now I can just do this. When he respawns, I'll kill those. You might PB this run. It's possible. He should be dead. 
All right. I'm going to abuse my little trick with the mage so I can phantom this guy. It's a little awkward to get it right, but... So I'm going to go here. Wait for the blob to pull up. Go out. Go far away. Watch how much health I get. 84? Watch how much health. 98. Phantom is powerful. Use it. It's really, really good. Okay, I see one is alive. Pray mage. If you're never sure if it'll drag, just make sure you pre-ranged. Wait for these to pull up. Go on him. Easy peasy. I can kill either of these blobs in any order. It doesn't matter. I can phantom off both of them, so it really doesn't matter. I gotta kill one of these out of position. Do you have to manual cast in order to phantom? Yes, you do. But it doesn't matter when you click them. You can click the spell on them at any time after you cast. Alright, let's just kill this one. I'll phantom the other one. Yeah. Two are dead, so probably the major life here. Nope. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. And we're full health. Easy. Alright, first melee. See, I saw the 26 XP drop. That tells me two are dead. Come down here, immediately cast to that one. Very little damage taken. Perfect. Bit off topic, but can you explain one tick with praise sounds? I don't do it with sounds, so I can't really explain it. <laughs> I don't personally do that. Well, I do, but I don't. I don't know the exact like timing for the sound. I don't like sound cues in this game. I don't like relying on that. Does Phantom work better the further distance you are? You just have to be at least eight tiles away. But like, as long as you're at like the max distance for your barrage, barrage is ten tile range. It's the same as Tebow. So if you're at the max range on a barrage, it'll always work. I can actually do this if I want to save time. This is a cool little maneuver. You can pull around this pillar and he'll still be stuck. So if I want to speed things up, there's times where you might want to rotate to the other side as well while corner trapping, so you can make it around in time. Here's another corner trap. Oh my god, he dug. Oh sweet, I can corner trap on this side. Forgot. Nice. You'll use that one a lot. You'll use the other side a lot. You'll use those both a ton. A ton, a ton, a ton. Okay, one of those is alive, so I've got two nibblers on the board. Let's just tank a, a, a bat for a second. I can actually go here and pray range, so I don't have to tank this. Let's just kill it. And go back to the mage. Now, if I want to be proactive, which is good to be proactive, is stand on this tile. So just in case the mage doesn't die in time before the man digs. Remember I talked about this earlier? The melee is going to dig right there, and we can corner trap. It's like nothing even happened. You want to be proactive with melees. Always have a plan for what to do when it digs, because there's no guarantee you're going to kill something in time. Which method do you use? I go off sound if I'm not looking at the screen. If I'm looking at the prayers, I go off when they unlight. I can do both. When do you usually start using Bastion? I save it until the very end. Ah, oh, let's do a let's do a uh, off tick here. Just do it for fun. Cool. So I'm just watching the mage and then off tick. Almost always when you have that spawn, it's gonna off tick by default unless you do something weird. What's great about off-tick with a melee and a mage is the melee cannot dig while you're shooting the mage. So there's nothing to worry about. I don't have to have a plan right now. Oh my god, my west pillar has three nibblers! Calm down. <laughs> calm, calm down. It's west pillar. I don't care about west pillar at all. 
Let's go get it now. There you go. Cool. My West Pillar lost half its health. It's fine. Calm down, dude. You're going to be fine. It's okay. It doesn't really matter. Is this a teaching stream? It do be. It do be the teaching stream for the third time. Let's just flick this guy. I don't want to tank bats. If I can avoid tanking bats, I always do. You can actually phantom on any mob. So let's phantom off the bats. Why don't we? It's less effective than with Bloblets, but it still gets you health. Got me one health there. Less than it usually does. Yeah, he's dead. I could have got more health. Sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go here. I'm not behind a pillar. I can't one tick. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can one tick anywhere. It's the be all end all. But, 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 no monkey. I don't know how to one tick. I spent all day flinching everything. I know. Why were you doing that? <laughs> You should have been one ticking your your blob stacks. Melee digs, go right here. Sweet. Yes, you can, soldier. Get in there. He dug, but he's dead. He doesn't know it. Forty health, probably major life. I'm ready to pray mage in case it is, and go kill it. All right. Let's see. What do we got? Ah, uh, that's free. Cool. Pray range because it read me. Forty XP drop. I know they're all dead. Cool. AFK. You could run through this, flick the mage and the blob, and not kill the melee. Just kill the melee. It's fine. How much of a difference does Hebo make? Cro uh, Bofa is almost the same on everything, except for Zuck. It's 15% worse on Zuck. So that's why I, I tell people Bofa is totally viable. We'll do a little bit more lazy flicking. It's actually pretty close on mage, surprisingly, off task. I forget exactly. It's like 8% worse or something. Don't quote me on that. Mages have high defense, so Bofa cuts through that. Should be dead. Kill order. I want that blob alive last. It's going to give me the most health. Just do things the same way. Have the same priorities. Uh oh, trolled. Come back. Okay, cool. We still get my phantom. It wouldn't matter if I didn't have full health. He's dead. He hasn't figured it out yet. I'll pick up my restore at some point. Okay, this is another alternate wave. Horrible. Okay, drop specs. Pray rigor. We're tanking. We might be brewing here. Yep, we're brewing. This is not how I normally would solve it, but just, just so we're clear. Rigor on. Okay, wait for that next mage attack. Come over here. We're going to let this melee down. We're going to let this melee down. Okay, that was pretty unlucky. I took a lot of damage. But that's a really good uh, really good case for Brew. <laughs> I'm tanking a bunch of things. I've got to kill stuff. I'm Rigor on. That's the time for Brew. Is this a no prey flicking stream? I'm just showing people like how it would be if they were going for it. 
Okay, let's give him a couple more shots. Come up here. Alternate now. If he digs, I'm gonna corner trap him. It'll be totally fine. I would have panic died there for sure. It was a sucky wave. Anytime you gotta kill two bats, it's usually put rigor on. Rigor gives you defense, which is really important. Okay, let's kill this. I'm gonna phantom off this blob, and then we'll be good. We should be healing off this melee, actually. Here, let's go over here. He read me on range. That sucks. Okay, didn't hit me. Alright, uh, I'm actually gonna heal off this blob. That's what you should do if you're below 60 health. Heal on the blobs. All right, we'll get almost full health. It should be fine. Okay. Come down here. We're going to pray melee in a second. Can actually corner trap him if I'm fast. Missed it. It's okay. I actually didn't miss it. Yes, I did. I did miss it. Just kill it. Don't worry about that nibbler. I know you want to kill it. I know you do. Just hold. I get it now. All right. Let's go. Huh? Kill this. Spoon spawn. And most spawns are spoon. It's just not dying on the occasional bad spawn you get. That's how you get your cape. All right, let's kill this. I'm going to phantom both of these. Oh, let him back behind pillar. If you kill him out here, it's gonna split weird and you can't phantom. Not that I need to, but still. You don't ever want to kill it out there. Not ideal. With this, you get this nice clump every single time. That should be dead. Give him a shot just in case. Nope. Cool. Come up here. Let's go to the left. And this is a safe spot, so we chill here. What am I going to do if they dig? What am I going to do if they dig? I'm going to go right here. So let's show what that would be. Is there a way to import your tile markers? They're on my Inferno Guide. You can grab them all. You copy them from the paste bin there, and you hit import, and it'll it'll take them all in. Oh my god, they dug! And we're fine. Sweet. Free. Alright, this is when the waves start getting very fun. So from now on, Mystic... We don't use Mystic. Mystic don't get touched. Can you explain marked tiles? The yellow tiles are ductiles, so ignore those. Yellow tile here is triples. We'll just corner trap this guy repeatedly while explaining. This is the Nibbler tile. This is Addy tile. You don't use this on a first cape. So don't worry about this one. This green tile lets you hit Nibblers on this pillar from here. You'll shoot like through the pillar and hit them. It's really handy. And then this, this tile right here, this is the Nibbler tile. So this lets me cast it Nibblers on my pillar. So here and here you can get Nibblers. These two. Both really handy. Mr. Jam Guy, how goes it, my dude? Okay, next waves are Mage Ranger. So, we start in full armadil for the range defense. Crystal shield, everything. So we're wearing our full armor. We don't use Ancestral anymore. We see what we get. 40 XP drop, gorgeous. We just chill. If I run out gung-ho at this point, um, it'll make a pillar stack. So let's not do that. AFK. 
Other thing with these waves. I can do it with one ticking. Other thing with these waves. Nibblers from now on, they get one cast. They get one cast. You don't run and chase a nibbler after wave 50. You never, ever do that. So figure one cast. If it's a good XP drop, great. If it's not, oh well. If you misclick and you don't hit any of them, oh well. You missed it. Unlucky. I just lagged a tick there and took that mage hit. That's really, really cool. That happens. You can see the little blip there. That's really awesome. Anyway. <laughs> Let's do cool guy flicks. Did you talk about how if you didn't stand on that like left tile behind the pillar, they would have stacked up? They wouldn't have spread apart like that? Oh, yeah, I can explain that on a, on a future yeah. wave. I've done that once, but not like super in-depth. Sweet. And we're starting every wave from this pillar. Oh my god, a ranger's right there! Go around the pillar. In fact, I'm gonna have to kill this bat. Let's go back. Sweet, it's dead. Go back to the mage. I'm gonna actually let him pull up a bit. Just so when it respawns, I don't have to deal with the bat. Cool. What plugin is that? This is Ping Grapper plugin. I have it set to show ticks lost. Is that the guy talking was part of my music? You've been tricked. <laughs> yeah, there's someone else. It's my subconscious Sorry. speaking to me. You'll see when he rounded the corner to go back to the ranger to kill the bat. He clicked around the corner before he turned on range prey. You ah, take yeah, a tick to that. get around the corner, so you have that tick of time to turn on the correct prayer. So watch this. I'm turning the corner. Range prey. So you can instantly turn the corner no matter what. You can always drift around the corner. No matter what cycle things are in, you always have a tick to get the next prayer on. So move around, tick. That looks so simple and easy, but knowing that you can do that is really, really helpful. Knowing that you can rotate pillars at any given moment is so helpful. And if you're afraid to do that, you're not going to do it. You'll never rotate pillars. Okay. All right, I saw one of these are dead. Let's think for a second. Let things pull up. I am going to kill this bat. I could flick my way over to the nibblers, but why would I do that? I don't care about West Pillar at all. In the slightest. The least important pillar. Cool, kill all the bats. I'm going to drop specs on them so they die faster. Cool, it's dead. Good case for rigor if you want to get to nibblers faster. Makes a lot of sense to use it. I'm not going to go risk my life to go get those nibblers. It's not worth it. Waste of my time. Waste of my health. Waste of my life. I'm not going to do it. If the pillar goes down, oh well. It's not going to go down. But if it did, I don't care. West is best. We don't care about West Pillar. We don't care. Now that everything's ranged damage, we'll go get it. And you can even phantom on nibblers if you want a little bit more health. I know that's dead. Go back up here. Bro, you're inside him. I'm gonna actually get my sand or my restore, not sand view. Sweet. Okay, that West Pillar's looking really low. I don't care. <laughs> don't care at all. Blob read me first tick, so that instantly sets me up on the cycle for this. Sorry, I'm doing a two tick like it's a speed run. See how I just rotated that pillar? So let's go back and start alternating. Your other option there was just chin the nibbler from the nibbler tile. Works perfectly fine. A little safer. A little less scary. Whatever you're comfortable with, it doesn't really matter. Chin it, barrage it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. Cheat it with your sand fuse and uh, and bring your scythe out, and you're gonna scythe the mage when it gets to low health. You know all those Dude, things. Your brain is on. Uh... <laughs> I'm in the inferno. We're speedrunning. You get what I'm saying, though. I kind of prefer the pillars to be dead, so they come to North Pillar instead. For speedruns, you want these two dead at this point. That's ideal. You actually do. Ideally, you'd have South Pillar like go down on wave 50. That's perfect. 
Let's do this from the right side. Don't ever kill a blob there. Kill it here. It's a free phantom. I have full health, but just in case I miss a flick, what if I take a 29? You never know. Be smart. Okay, now we can put Ancestral on, if you want. And we can also, uh, pray ranged. Cool. Pray mage, come here. Alright, we gotta go immediately here. Click this. Alternate. We're gonna kill that bat. Cool. You can phantom there? You can, you can. That's the other really easy one. Those two sides of pillar, you can. Being afraid to do this on this wave would be a nightmare. What would you do? You have a blob up there, you have a mage over there, and you have a range over there. What do you do? How do you solve this wave without doing this? You don't. You run south. That's the only other option. Run south or do this. This is why I don't tell people to flinch, ever. It's never, ever worth, like, not pounding in your brain how to one-tick. One-ticking is so good. It solves everything. Anytime you see a blob and a big thing, I don't care. I can I can flick both. It's so easy. I just alternate. Because I practice that, it's easy. But if you don't practice it, you're not going to get good at it. You're never going to use it. And you're going to die to solves that are really easy, like this. When you shouldn't die, you should live. Living is good. I like living. How can you tell if they're two-tick clickable? It's not important for a first cape, but it's if you come out and they both see you the same tick. That's the easiest way. Okay, I can pull this mage down. This is a free spawn. Now, I want to be careful here. I don't want these to drag down the side, so I'm going to stand here to make sure these drag in. Okay, we're good now. The west pillar, no monkey! The west pillar! The west pillar's going to go down, no monkey! I don't care. I don't care at all. Kill the mage? Oh, sweet. I think I can save it now. Just gonna pray ranged. Come back. I tank one blob hit. Cool. I saved the pillar. If I didn't save the pillar, would I cry? No. I would not. It would be fun. <laughs> so next time nibblers go over there, it's gonna go down. And I'm aware of that. I'm gonna keep that in mind. I don't care about West Pillar. It's nibbler food. Alright, let's get my phantom heal going. With a ranger, you can still phantom heal because you're praying ranged against both of these. Really handy. That mage just died. I want to come back so I don't get hit by it. Go here. Easy. No pillar inferno coming soon? I've already done a pillarless on stream. It wasn't very eventful. I think it's pretty easy to do a pillarless. Maybe I'll speedrun pillarless when I get really, really bored, but uh, probably not. Okay, next wave is a big scary one. This is the, one of the second hardest, probably the second hardest wave. Oh, I was in Ancestral doing that, lol. This is two blobs, Mage Ranger. All right, come here. I saw the 40 XP drop. Those are all dead. All right, it max hit me. That's not ideal. Let's chill here a second. We're going to flick these guys all at once. All right, go. Isn't it great I can one-tick flick? What would I do if I couldn't one-tick flick? I'd probably die. God, it's convenient. It just solves just about every wave, huh? <laughs> so, it's important for me to remember I gotta flick this until the last blob attack. And rotate. Pray mage just in case. They didn't hit me. Cool. What's great about this position is I know I'm getting two full phantoms, so I'm gonna get full health no matter what. Typher, thank you for the follow, my dude. And I'd 69 you, my man. Absolute beast. Alright. Specker, Blood Brothers, the Ranger, they're both good. I like to use specs on things that I don't normally barrage, because that lets me get like more health out of them. Okay, I'm failing to click. At later waves, specs are really good for melee's because um, if you're tanking it and something else, mm -hmm. it will heal you, kill them faster. Melee, anytime you've got like, oh, I, I'm, I have the melee same tick, like, rigor, spec it, it's great. 
Uh, anytime you're taking two bats or one bat, just spec it, great, gets it out of the equation. Bats hit you way harder than you'd think. They are not fun to be hit by. So get them out of the equation. All right. 60, we should get to like 90 health here. Yeah, about right. Uh, this wave isn't scary, so I'm okay with going into it without 99, but normally not the play. All right, we immediately go here because I see a scary thing right here. Now, in this case, I'm going to kill the melee because I can't reach that mage without flicking these two. I could set up an off tick. Let's keep it easy, though. Just kill the melee. I don't have to worry about the dig. Gets him out of the equation. Let's go down here. I can shoot this guy for a second. Let's just let the mage fully pull up and go to him. Cool. If it respawns melee and I'm in this position, what am I going to do? I'm going to go here when it digs. It's going to be really easy. It's always the same. I might get a chance to show it. I could sit an off tape, but there's no need to be fancy. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Keep it simple, stupid. Killing a melee, pulling it out of the equation, usually fine. I like to kill the mage first if I can, but if I can't... Perfect. Kill the melee. It's totally fine. Let's do the funny thing with the mage as well. That works as well. As metal has said. I killed it anyway, so we're going to go down here. I'll do that next time that opportunity presents itself. Should happen again. Cool. Alright, we're now full health. Let's heal up a bit. Mm, full health. Hey, if you can get 99, you might as well, right? Okay. All right, this is a really common thing. I always go right here. That's my instinct. Why? Because I can corner trap things. So let's just shoot this guy. In fact, I'm going to pray melee, and I'm going to come here, because I can cast this. It's dead. Sweet. West Pillar lives one more day. Love it. I don't know why I'm life supporting West Pillar, but I am. Why not? Now, what am I going to do if he respawns? I'm going to go right here. As soon as he digs. Probably not going to happen, but... I'm going to sip this just to speed it up a bit. Can we call it the decoy pillar? It's pretty much what it is. Okay, I can show the uh, the other option you can do with a monster. So if you stand a tile off the monster like this, when that melee digs, you can actually use it as a pillar. Can I hit this ranger? Yeah. Kill this bat first, just to show it off. This is a handy little move. Don't kill it. Let's just AFK a second. I feel like you secretly love the Wisp Pillar. I hate it. It slows me down in speedruns. It's such a terrible pillar. So this ranger acts as a pillar. So you can stand right here. You can do that with any other NPC. You can do it a lot with mages, a lot with rangers. They just go a tile out and it gets stuck on there. It's all about being proactive. All about being proactive. All right. 59. All right, let's chill here. Give me a second to think. Just kill something while I think. Pull this down, shoot it. I'm still thinking. Oh, let's just kill this. I really don't feel like flicking anything. I really don't. I don't need to with this spawn, so why bother? I could off take with the ranger and the mage, but there's no reason to. I've got a melee here I can pull out of the equation. Just go here. Kill this bat. And back to shooting you. Sweet. Keep it easy. Also, you can kill bat one tile in front of range slash blob, but not major. Yeah, major, you have to be in their melee range to shoot the bat on the other side, so that doesn't work. What's your PB? I have a 49.18. I should have much lower, but, uh, you know, I'm bad at the game. We died on the 47.30 pace run, unfortunately. Average. 
All right, don't forget, you can blood barrage anything from back here. You can phantom anything. You don't have to do just the, um, just the bloodlets. You can do it with anything. You can do it with a ranger. You can do it with a melee. You can do it with anything. So if you need health, use it. Don't put on the ancestral. Uh, that's a bad habit. All right, let's drag this guy over. We're going to do an off tick. Yep, he'll line up. Cool. Free. In fact, I'm going to go here. You'll see that blob would have come down this right side, and I didn't want that to happen. So if I stand here and shoot him, that doesn't happen. But, 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 no monkey, your south pillar! I'm fucking a melee and a mage. Give me a second, please. Oh my god. Man, you got no chill. I'm on wave 60. I don't care about south pillar. Jesus Christ. Alright. In fact, I'm going to kill this melee. You can flick rigor if you want, if you've got good prayer. It's up to you. If you don't have good prayer, I mean, South Pillar's gonna live the next eon, so. Alright, might as well go get it now. So let's pray mage coming out. Pray ranged. And pray mage. That's actually really annoying that he got pushed out. We can still corner from the other side, so let's do that. Or we can still phantom from here. Can you tell us what you care about? <laughs> My North Pillar is what I care about. I love North Pillar. It needs to live. <laughs> this is the only pillar that matters to me. This is my babe. Here, I'll even... Uh, we'll give it a kiss. North Pillar. Mm -hmm. But the thing about North Pillar is I can cast from here. I can cast from here. I have like 50 angles of attack on North Pillar to get it safe. The things on a... Uh, things on West Pillar and things on a uh, South Pillar are hard to get at. So, from here, it's super easy to protect North Pillar. It shouldn't take that much damage if you're being careful. All right, let's go to the Baraga tile. Uh, get the full stuff on. Cast. I'm full health. It doesn't really matter. Make sure you don't take damage from that mage. All right, we're good. Okay, little thing you can do. If you're worried about damage, you pray Augury. Augury is a really good defensive spell. Every time I go here. Every single time I go here. Why? So I can attack things. Let's just pull the melee out of the equation. I'm on a timer because I really don't want those nibblers touching my north pillar if I can avoid it. So this is a good case for rigor. They are frozen, which is good. Nibblers are starting to get up there. I'm fine. I have loads of health on this pillar for a reason. Give it a cast. Should be all dead. Cool. Back to work. I've seen so many people die trying to save South and West Pillar and then not care at all about their North Pillar leaving stuff on it all day. North Pillar's the one we care about. Apollo, thank you for the follow, my dude. We get a prediction for triple death. No! Because that's impossible. There's no chance. Don't do that flick on a first cape. I'm just speeding through this a little bit. No shot, you made the prediction. <laughs> I don't believe this. Sacrilege! Did doubles beat me to it? He actually beat me to it. No we were shot. both doing it at the same time. Zero percent chance. Amazing doubles. Okay, 62 is one of the hardest waves. Here we go. Oh, that's a shit spawn. All right. Here we go. Off tick. All I care about is the ranger and the mage right now. These bats don't exist. Rigor is on. I've misclicked. It's fine. Remember, you can barrage this from this tile. Really, really helpful. I'll take a couple blobs. I want to get them off of there. I'll flick in a second. It's fine. I want to get my stuff off there. This is a terrible spawn. All right, start alternating. We don't kill rangers. We don't do that. Bad habit. I don't know why I was doing it. Don't kill rangers. Ever. 
What happens if it respawns a ranger right now? I get a pillar stack. I don't want to do a pillar stack. Okay, let's wait for the melee to respawn, or the melee to dig. There it is. And rotate. Okay, it has the potential to respawn a blob. If it respawns a blob, I'm going to flick. If it respawns bats, I'm going to kill them. We will be fine. While you have some headspace, could you talk about how you optic the ranger and the major around the corner? Yeah. Now that we're good. Um, I saw melee coming up, so I had to do it fast. Ranger was next to me. Major's up here. I'm waiting for the ranged attack, and then I run out to the mage, so he sees me right after. So you wait for the attack of the thing next to you, and then you run out to go get the other thing. That's how you do an off tech. That was just about as bad a 62 as it could be. That's really, really bad. So but it happens. When, when he sees the ranged attack and he prays ranged, he'll mm -hmm. take one tick to round the corner and then pray mage, and then the mage will went... attack on that next tick. Okay, go. Yeah. Is what I did. So by doing that, it'll it'll two tick off tick them um, by default. Isn't 63 harder? They're about exactly the same, I would call it. Arguably harder. Bats suck. They hurt you a lot. Two bats is no bueno. You saw how much damage I took from those bats. It was about 40. It kind of sucks. I was playing Rigor even. They also kind of are weirdly sized. They push stuff around and they don't, they don't yeah. stack things up the right way. Let's just make sure I get full health. I can phantom from anywhere, anytime. Cool. Full health. He's dead. Okay, hardest wave. Here we go. Let's sip this. Pray Augury just so you take less damage. I can corner trap this magician. And this is free because I did this. If I didn't corner trap this, this would suck. This would suck because I know, hey, I can corner trap this. So I'll just kill this melee. So this little maneuver should be your default. Cast, go here. Every single time. You'll see me do that in speedruns when there's literally no reason to do it. I don't care. It's wave 63, dude. I could have lost this pillar like four waves ago. It'd be fine. <laughs> Oh, wait, yeah, he's literally in the chat immediately. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> okay, what do I do if the melee digs? I'd come right here and I'd flick range blob. Oh, we're fine. I'll just wait for it to uh, dig. I seriously don't care about this pillar in the slightest. I'm not going to use it. Cool. This guy has half health, so might as well rigor. Make sure you wait when they're under you to see how they path. Because they can get you killed. Okay, let's keep armor on. I expect to take some damage and go. Just tank a couple blob hits. Fine. Come back instantly. Prayer mage. Cool. And they're both dead. Nice. Uh, let's just kill this. Mm, it's clicking. Oh man. Oh, he did get stuck. That's kind of annoying. Alright, right, I'm gonna kill this. Alternate. Let me catch up on the chat a second after I kill this. Gotta run south to save Pillar in wave 65. Do not pull a mammal. You will die. <laughs> when fighting a major or ranger and melee digs, isn't the melee automatically off ticked by one? It is not. Um, it's, it's completely dependent on the attack cycle of the mage. If the mage attacks you the same tick it digs, they'll be the same ticked. So you gotta be careful. It's not guaranteed. Is crystal armor better with Tebow or armor? It's complete preference. Arma's got less prayer bonus and less ranged defense, but it has more DPS, which is good for Zuck. Good for triples. Whatever you want to use. It seriously doesn't matter. Don't resell anything you have to get something else. It's a waste of time. You can run Arma. You can run Crystal. It don't really matter. Okay, we move on. Okay. 
Still want to wear my armor. I'm going to pray augury. Let's just do the off tick thing. It should be fine. Yep, it's off tick. So I'm staring at the movement of the melee to see when it off ticks. So when you're flicking things, I'm kind of just like staring at this guy. And switching to the next thing. I was like, he attacked me, switched to mage. He attacked me, switched to mage. He attacked me, switched to mage. He's really simple. Don't be afraid of doing this with the melee because it's really, really nice. When you have a melee on you, it can't dig. It's great. What if melee starts Fortnite dancing? I think it's over. You should just quake exit at that point, probably. Unlucky. I'll rotate here. Why not? I can do it. Ow! Wait for the corpse to go away first. <laughs> Uh, melees almost never hit you. They have really low accuracy. A lot of times you can tank them. Don't tank them on purpose. They can hit 49, but it's just kind of rare that they do that. Savvy, thank you for the follow. Okay, next wave is 65. That's double ranger. It's really important that we pre augury on that wave. We can get wamboed. So, so this is the most important wave to have 99 health by far. We're potentially taking, I believe, 95 damage at the start of the wave. So have all the defense stuff on. Have everything ready. Okay. Let's just go here. This will be an easy thing to off tick. Wait for it. I'm waiting for this attack. Go. I want to get the Snibbler. I can do it while off ticking. Easy. I see it's dead. 13 XP. Cool. We're good. Kill the mage. If you wanted to, you could totally kill the ranger in that case, so you don't have to off tick these. I just don't want it to respawn. It wouldn't really matter in this case, though. So when the Major's on the side of the pillar and it respawns a range, it's not a big deal. It's fine. Make sure you have someone timing your sets. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> We're going to fly through these duck. Any tips for guaranteeing that they're attacking two ticks apart? There were one tick apart there. You just wait longer. Wait an extra tick. It's kind of, you just go by feeling. I don't really care what tick it's off tick, though. You should be able to flick it no matter what. As long as it's off tick, that's all I care about. And it's being able to quickly recognize that they're off tick. Or force it to be that way. Do you have an Inferno Guide? I do. I do, I do. Remember all that hullabaloo about the pillars? Remember how little I cared about them? By the way, this thing still has half health. Remember how little I went to go save Nibblers? This thing still has over three quarters. We're on the last wave. What is your IQ? You seem very smart. Dude, 200. 100%. All right. Uh, this is mage, so you can kind of just do whatever you want. Just pray mage. I don't know why I killed that. I didn't have to. <laughs> Use the pillar to your advantage. You can pull these together so you can pipe them. So the main idea with these is you want to kill these right next to each other so they don't respawn each other. It's really minor. It doesn't really matter. I'm actually going to pull this guy down. They're right next to me. Alright. I, I would recommend not flicking two mages. But I do it all the time. Whatever. If it's your first cape and you've got enough prayer, if you've got like four and a half restore at this point, don't, don't flick these. Just kill them. It's too much risk. It's not worth it. Okay, this guy's low enough up. Tebow could kill it, so let's move on to the other one. Yeah, the plan is uploading this. That's that's why I'm recording it. So this guy's lower. I'm going to go back to attacking this. I've got enough prayer. I'm just going to freaking pray for rigor. I don't care. In fact, let's potion. Pipe when they're really low like this. And you can even drop a spec just to confirm. Make sure they both die. I was in Ancestral that whole time. <laughs> All right. For Jad, I stand right here. This is the ideal tile. Just stand here. This gives you the highest chance of healers ending up behind you. That's ideal. 
The projectile for Jad is as soon as it is on the screen is when it's attacked. So, now it's on the screen. Really, really simple. Okay. This is a gorgeous clump. Here, let's come right here. You can come in and pray melee and it'll actually corner trap the healer. You don't have to worry about it. Right, so that's an option. If you have full health. Let's just do this like it's any other healer spawn. And let's clump them up. Alright, you can actually shift click walk now. So let's get them clumped up. Let's run back and forth. Wait for the next attack. Run through. Keep melee prey on. Cool. And click him. So I can get full health this way. Really easy. Sweet, I'm full health. Back to killing a jet. Let's log out. That's what you would normally do, is log out in a, in a real attempt. Let's just kill this boy. When you're stacking up and running through, you're always going to want to do it west to east or east to west. Yes. Uh, doing yes. it north to south. Yeah, Don't it do it move. from through here or here. It's just weird thing with the path thing. East to west tends to work better. They tend to all be on this side anyway, so going from here to here is really natural. All right. So I logged out. When you click log out, it pauses the wave. Nothing's going to spawn. We're free. You just go up to this tile. This is where I'm going to start triples. This is where you always start triples. I am going to pre-pot a brew. I'm going to pre-pot a restore. And I'm going to click a divine. And then I'm going to log out. Easy. Now when I log back in, they're going to respawn. We go from there. Okay. Let me explain some things on triples before. Before I do it, because last time they got me killed, lol. <laughs> Triples, you have three ticks per attack. Really, that's a ton of time. That is so much time. So, it's just do one action per attack. You do an attack, you can do one click. Pray against the next attack, you can do one click. So for each healer, it's going to be one tag per attack. Very, very simple. You can pray rigor for when triples are up. If you've got the prayer. If you've got over four restore, go for it. Just camp rigor. You're good. you got so much restore. Uh, other than that, the tile I stand on is going to matter. We'll see if I get a healer spawn where it matters. I'll show that live. Healers is easy. Just relax the nerves. The only way you die to triples is bad nerves, or you're trying to explain something to a bunch of people. <laughs> Mage. Mage. Range. I've heard people say that talking out loud helps them with triples as well. So might be helpful to you. As soon as projectiles on screen, switch to the next one. Give him a cast. Give him a cast. Give him a cast. Pray mage. Pray range. One action per attack. Super chill. In this case, I've got to tank one of the healers. It's fine. You'll take a little bit of damage from him. This is tick perfect with the prayers. So tick perfect. Tick perfect. Tick perfect. Tick perfect. That's all it is. Knowing how long you have is really, really nice to relieve the stress a bit. Okay. Um. I don't know if I'd go over here on a first cape. Going here is totally fine. Up to you. It'll spawn a little nicer on this side, but then you've got to run around the mock. Th and you can do this in any order you want. It really doesn't matter. It's all preference. Just kill this one first. Okay, I'm going to click Jed. I'm going to click this guy. Now I'm going to click this guy. Cool. Don't tell him. No shot. I don't believe I just tanked. I don't. I refuse. Somebody clip it so I can look at it. <laughs> I don't believe.
You tanked 100%? Okay. Well, we could do the discussion I had last time, where you almost always can tank one hit. Average hit on the Jad, I believe, is high 40s. It's like a 49. On average, you'll live. If you pre breathe at 115, you'll live every time. It's guaranteed. They max a 113. I'd say the biggest tip is don't explain to people how to do jads while doing jads. <laughs> it causes you to get hit. <laughs> Tank? Okay, okay. I've got a million prayer, so I'm just going to keep this one. Let's keep the rigor on. It's real. You hovered over the prayer and then just didn't click it. No shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I your mouse it. went there and then it went back. My mouse always goes there, so I just thought it was the other animation then. Easy. Oh, yeah, you would log out normally. I don't care. Uh, Jad, it's going to be different for you, probably. Or Zuck. <laughs> Jad. Uh, turn on Rigger before you start and hover his name. Or you won't get the shot on Rigger. So this is going to be a ranger side spawn. So I'm just going to pray range to Rigger the third time it comes over here. And we're going to obliterate it. Do I kill all the things? I'll kill all the things. Sure. I usually do skips, whatever. You can flick if you're low prayer, like just doing this. It'll help you if you're on like below two restore. If you're above two restore, I wouldn't even flick. Like you're probably fine. I'm not brewing because I'm going to get like near full health off this ranger with the specs. Do one last shot. All right. Hopefully we kill him. Big specs, big damage. Holy cow, you're dead. You had a good run. All right, tag this boy. Start killing him. Wait to kill the mage until after you get him to 600. It's going to help you. Don't do any of this, but, you know. Why am I flicking with eight, 18 restores or whatever I have? Mm. So just, I'm looking to see his health go to 600 before I start shooting that page. At 600 health, he pauses. So there's a set timer going in the background for the next set to spawn in. We're just going to chill. Just keep shooting Zuck until he's 600, and then we'll take this guy out. Click stamina at any point. Rebasting at any point. All right, he's below 600. Kill this. He forgot the set timer! I don't care about the set timer. It's not dead. Now it is. Cool. Jad's going to spawn at 480. I haven't killed a Jad in so long, man. It's going to feel wrong. <laughs> oh, God. It's Jad. All right. Okay. I like to turn my camera like this. And just when the shield catches up to you, you're good to move to the next spot. Yep. See, he's uh, twitched. Okay, next shot is going to spawn the healers. Cool, Baraga it. Make sure you keep Rigor on with Zuck. It's extremely important to be DPSing as hard as you can. This is what you got resources for. Alright. We can pray melee, just make sure these don't hit us. All right, we keep doing damage. So now we're going to want to brew up to full health. I'm talking full health. I'm talking waste a dose to get to full health. Going into healers on max HP is really, really helpful. Less input for you. Theoretically, my bow could send here. Right? 75. I'm not even sure. No, it can't send. I'm going to give him one more shot. Doing mental math. It's a little different. Huge shot. All right. We're going to send the shot as the, the wall is leaving. I'll send one more. Why am I praying this? Pray uh, redemption. All right. Shoot this. I'll shoot this. i shoot this. And I'll shoot this. All right. So literally, it's the same as walking. Is um, moving two tiles with your pipe. Okay, so you're always with the shield as long as you're doing this. 
Be careful with the shield. You can drop specs on these if they've come back by now. This is kind of crazy how little damage I've taken. <laughs> this is not normal. Okay. And kills up. I don't know if my spec was big or what. Or if I just took no damage. Okay. And it should be free from here. What is the DPS on those healers? That was really, really good. But not losing ticks on healers, you kill them really, really fast. Even though that was good DPS. That's not like crazy. That's not like absurd. Don't run too far. Stay with the shield. <laughs> Remember those safe spots aren't safe? Loads of people die after they kill healers because they just run up to the next safe spot willy-nilly. Uh, die. But no, what if bad? I'm not bad. I'm good. Cape acquired. Very difficult. We only took one jet hit, apparently. <laughs> nice. Hour and a half. That's not bad. I did, like, no flicking or anything, so... Uh, we take that. A fedora tip. 